Welcome to ST Drums TV. Today we will show you how we turned this old drum set from the attic into this beautiful shiny vintage dream. One of our customers brought us this old Sonor drum set. We tried to identify which model it was and the Tom Brackets helped us to find out that it was actually a Sonor Champion set. The set didn't have the typical Champion badges on, but rather had these old ones from the Teardrop era. Like mentioned in our Performer Signature episode, old Sonor is like a box of chocolates. And it seems like the set is from a very early production period of the Champions, when these badges were still around. Looking at the old catalogs at sonormuseum.de, it seems like in the early to mid 70s, Sonor had Champion drum sets with these round tom mounts and Super Champion drum sets with these flat iron or boat shaped mounts. However, on this particular set, the bass drum had a little boat and the toms had the round mounts. In later catalogs, you could find the same combination, but the sets had square black Champion badges. By the way, if you buy drum sets with the name Champion or Super Champion, you will have to be careful. There are also these ones around that were probably made in the Far East and are not really worth that much. Always go for the Sonar sets with these large lugs. As you can see here, in the 70s the Luck had a thin drumstick logo, like the teardrop badges, and in the 80s they changed the drumsticks to thicker ones, as the ones that can be seen on the 80s bass drum logo. Also we found some sets in the earliest 70s catalogs that were called Champion, but actually had teardrop lugs on them. So with the teardrop logos and the teardrop lugs, probably these sets are always sold on the used market as teardrop, instead of Champion, which was their name in these catalogs. The set from our customer was painted blue, but we found out that this this color was not original. Also, the bearing edges were 30 degrees. As far as we know, champions usually had rounded edges. But maybe some super champions exist with 30 or 45 degrees. However, we guessed that the bearing edges as well as the paint job were done later. Unfortunately, the set was stored in a moist place, which caused the finish on the outside to deteriorate. Because the set was stored in the attic for many years, we also found this little fella, who unfortunately was already dead. The customer wanted us to add wooden veneers and polish the metal parts of the set. We recommended Palisander Santos veneer because a similar wood was used on some sets of that era. It looks a bit like the genuine rosewood phonic drums. So we started working on the set. First of all, we had to remove all of the hardware. Here is a little trick on how to remove the old mufflers. They got two nuts right behind each other to keep them from moving. Unfortunately, they can get tough and stiff after so many years, so they cannot be removed by hand. Hold the big knob on the outside with a pipe wrench, or bumbo wasatzong as we call it here in Pirmasens, but put a piece of cloth in between to avoid scratching the chrome finish. Then put a socket around the first nut and loosen it. Actually it looks loose on the video, that's because it was already loose and then I decided to film it and put it back on. Then just remove the second nut and the big one that moves the muffling device. The rest of the removal is pretty much self-explanatory. After removing the hardware, we polished them with good old steel wool. You can see here how much of a difference it makes. Then it was time to cut the veneers. Like mentioned before, Sonor orients the veneer grains always from head to head. Trees usually don't grow extremely wide, but rather high. That's why veneers that you will buy are usually very long in the direction of the grain and rather short in the other direction. To cover a 22 inch bass drum's circumference, which is around 1.75 meters, we would have to put multiple pieces next to each other and connect them in the front with tape. By the way, this veneer is called palisander, which is one of the translations used for the English term rosewood. These terms are actually just inventions by the wood industry and they don't mean just one particular type of tree. There are various types of wood that are sold by this name. However, mostly they belong to the genus Dalbergia. Rosewood is protected worldwide because the species is endangered due to over-exploitation. That's why the palisander veneers that we offer are made from a combination of faster growing trees that are not endangered. These veneers come with a fleece layer on the back and are mass produced. The one that we used on this set is called Palisander Santos and can be found in our webshop stdrums.com. We love the look of this veneer and also love the fact that it doesn't endanger real rosewood trees. Once the veneers were taped together, we had to apply our special glue to the shell and to the veneers back. Once the glue is dried, we press the shell and the veneers together. As you can see here, Eric left the veneer a bit longer. We always recommend to overlap drum wraps, but with veneer, it's better to put them end to end on the shell. That's why Eric draws a line precisely where the veneer piece starts and cuts off the rest. 
Then he presses again and sends down the tiny bit of overlap that was left. It's better to leave a bit of overlapping that can be sanded down later instead of cutting the veneer too short, leaving a visible gap. Then it's time to trim off the ends of the veneers that stick over the shell's bearing edges. Eric uses a knife and later some sandpaper for that. After that, we put wipe on poly on the shells. We recommend the brand Minwax. I just recorded the first layer because it looks the best and the contrast is the greatest, but eventually we added three layers, each with one day in between to let the previous layer dry. We reopened the holes by pushing a very small, sharp screwdriver from the inside out and then opening the holes to their original size with a reamer. These sonar drums set a special type of drilling. From the outside there's a slightly larger hole for the lugs to fit in and from the inside the hole is a bit smaller for just the fixing screws to get through. With the conical reamer it is a bit tough to open the holes to their original size without removing shell material on the inside. So we used a regular wood drill bit that was just the size of the larger holes and then carefully reopened them with the drill. Then we used this countersink drill bit to smoothen the outside of the holes and to get rid of the splinters. By the way, these teardrop style badges are normally fixed with four split rivets. Unfortunately, these rivets are no longer available anymore, so we recommend to use regular nails to fix the badges to the shells. We used a very small wood drill to open the four rivet holes a tiny bit wider, then we shortened some nails, put them through and just bent them on the inside with a hammer. Then we added the rest of the hardware back on. Originally, we offered the customer to put some wood veneer also on the inside of the shells to cover the blue paint. An alternative would be to sand down all of the blue paint on the inside. However, our customer decided for a cheaper alternative. He said he just wanted to hide the blue paint on the inside by putting white coated batter heads on a drop set. However, now that the set is finished, we think it looks very cool. It reminded me a bit of this modern cinematic look, orange and teal color coding. And I think it looks just great, nothing to hide here. So that's our little episode for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned if you want to see more vintage drum adventures like this. Send us an email or write us a comment if you have any questions. So see you in the next video.